Michael L. Parson was sworn in as Missouri's 57th governor on June 1st, 2018 by Missouri Supreme Court Judge Mary R. Russell. He came into the role of governor with a longtime commitment to serving others with over 30 years of experience in public service. Governor Parson previously served as the 47th Lieutenant Governor of Missouri. He was elected Lieutenant Governor on November the 8th, 2016 after claiming victory in 110 of Missouri's 114 counties and receiving the most votes of any Lieutenant Governor in Missouri history. Governor Parson served the Missouri of the people of the 28th Senatorial District of the Missouri Senate in 2011 to 2017. He served in the Missouri House of Representatives from 2005 to 2011. Governor Parson also served as a sheriff of Polk County from 1993 to 2005. He also served six years in the U.S. Army. Governor Parson has lived in Bolivar with his wife, Teresa. Together, they have two grown children and five grandchildren. He was raised on a farm in Hickory County and graduated from Wheatland High School in Wheatland, Missouri. He's a small business owner and is a third generation farmer who currently owns and operates a cow-calf operation near Bolivar. It is extraordinarily indeed my pleasure to introduce to you Missouri's 57th governor, the Honorable Mike Parson. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Please be seated. Man, it is great to be here today. Um, what a way to start the week off uh, in front of a lot of people here that really care about the future of Missouri. So it's great to be here the, today with you. I also want to introduce to you what, one of the great pleasures you have as governor. To, to Also, I get to introduce another person uh, that's very dear to me and very special to me that's on this journey with me. But it never gets old introducing the first lady of the state of Missouri over there in the doorway, Teresa Parson. And it's good to be here this morning to talk about education for the state of Missouri. And I can tell you, uh, it, it's going to be a ride is all I can tell you. We're going we're to put the education in high gear. For an old farm boy to say that, I guess, uh, but I'm expecting a lot of things out of all of you that's in this room for the future of our state. I do have to tell you, though, a little bit what it's like uh, being governor of the state of Missouri when you're married. And, you know, you always have your family and everything that are your friends. I'm going to tell you two incidents. I was back home in Bolivar on uh, Friday night. They has opened up a new hotel there in town, a Best Western, and I was going to be there. I kind of wanted to be back home. Anyhow, so everybody, we're running a little few minutes behind, and everybody's asking, you know, where you at? What time are you going to get here? My wife was already there. But then comes the text from my son, and it goes like this. Dad, get your butt up here. We're tired of waiting on you up here in Bolivar. <laughs> so uh, that kind of brings you back down to earth every once in a while. And uh, I asked Teresa here a while back, I said, I told Teresa, I said, in your wildest dreams, would you believe that you're married to the governor of the state of Missouri in your wildest dreams? And she said nothing. I was laying in bed and I said, Teresa, I said, did you hear me? I said, in your wildest dreams, did you ever believe you would be married to me as the governor of the state of Missouri? She said, Mike, you were not in my wildest of wildest dreams. <laughs> So uh, it's good to be humbled sometimes uh, w w w when you're in that position. Uh, it's great. It, so I, l let me just make a few comments this morning. And then at some point, I'll probably throw this book to the side. Now, I've got the lady that's here with me today that kind of helps me uh, writing everything, uh, she's a teacher. So good grief, I'm intimidated every day when she's up here trying to make sure I say these things right in these speeches and everything, but it's good to have her on board. Uh, Kelly Jones works for me in, in my public administration, or in my uh, public relations firm, and her husband's probably here somewhere. Uh, he's a superintendent also here. Is, is he here? Is he here somewhere? Where you at on that? There we go, Kelly Jones. He, uh, 
I thank them for working for me and for what they're doing for the governor's office there. So that's your inside track to the governor's office on that. First of all, just let me say I want to thank all of you for choosing the profession you've chosen, uh, especially the people that will shape the future of the generations for what you're going to do. And it isn't easy being an educator in today's world. Families are different. Children are different. Education is different. All of you superintendents have a tough job. You have to transport and educate our children. You have to balance a multi-million dollar budget. You provide food and safety for hundreds of children. And let me say that again, because you'll never get much credit for that. You provide food and safety for thousands and thousands of students across the state of Missouri. You most importantly, you play a role in shaping the future of our state. What you do and what you're going to do will matter to everyday people's lives. Your job is a serious one. You should always be looking for ways to stay on the cutting edge. As you know, I am a supporter of education and I want to make sure the future of our state and our Missouri kids are on the right track. You must work together to find ways to improve our children's education system. And it is my mission to learn from your experience to help you move forward toward that goal. When my time as governor will come to an end, I hope we can look back and see that our government officials have helped you and your schools accomplish what is needed to educate our children. This past year has been a tough one for the state of Missouri. However, the legislative body of the state of Missouri, why there's three different branches of government sometimes is a perfect example of what's happened in our state this year. During the time, during this transition period, during the time of turmoil in our state, the legislative body, the members of the House of Representatives and the members of the Senate kept their nose to the grindstones all year long and never received the due awards, the due thanks that they deserved for doing the job, for doing an oath they took upon themselves to complete what, to make Missouri better. They probably had one of the most historical legislative sessions this year by doing what they thought was right for Missourians and not getting distracted by everything else that was going on in the state of Missouri. And they put together one of the strongest state budgets that we've seen in a long time, which included, which I had the privilege of signing, that we fully funded the foundation formula. Another issue that we've had to deal with is the lack of members of the State Board of Education. Last month, one of the first actions I took as governor, I appointed Carol Hawquist and Peter Hershen to that board so a quorum could be established and the work of the education of this state could continue and move forward with the look for a new commissioner. And I want to thank Roger Dorsey for what he done. All during this time, him and Charlie Shields, and Charlie's here on the front as the chairman, for what they done during this entire time to make sure they held the fort down during that time. And I want to thank both of you gentlemen for doing what you did and for making sure that we kept education where it needed to be. And if you'd please just stand a minute, let's recognize both these men here. There are still three current vacancies on that board. One member also term will expire. My goal is to fill all four of those spots by the end of this calendar year. There will rest assured that we are going to make sure our children are going to get a proper education. 
There's a reason you went into this profession. Every single educator here might come from different backgrounds, but we all share the same quality when it comes to our jobs. It's called passion. It's passion what drives each and every one of us, me just like it does you, to do what we feel like is best and what we feel is best for Missourians and for our Missouri kids. It's your passion for your students. This leads us to the satisfaction of watching them move into their chosen profession. Some, many of those students, will become teachers, and some will be sitting in the same chairs that you're sitting in today in the future, and they will become administrators. And that'll all be because of what you've done. And we must continue to prepare our students for the real world by supporting and improving public education. An important piece of legislation I was proud to sign was represented Lane Gallon's, Gannon's House Bill 1606, also handled by Senator Gary Romine in the Senate. And this bill gives students the option of choosing between the ACT work keys and the ACT assessment. And this will be a great workforce development tool involving students who want to enter the workforce right after high school. It will also expand courses access and virtual school programs throughout Missouri. This will help many students in rural and low income districts. For many students, certain classes are not available for them to take. Now we should be able to provide these students who have the skills to excel in these courses the same opportunities as students in other districts. Workforce development, two things will be the main goals of this administration, infrastructure and workforce development. Those will be two keys that I will focus on as the governor of the state of Missouri. You will play an important role in workforce development as we move forward. There's a program out there that the First Lady heads up called JAG, Jobs for American Graduates. And it's programs like this that we are gonna do our part I, my part as governor, to provide you the tools you need for these kids. This program really deals with at-risk kids. The kids that probably are borderline between they make it or whether they don't. This program has started several years ago, many years ago. The national, the vice president of the United States, Mike Pence, was actually the chairman of it when he was governor of Indiana. And what we do is we take these kids in school that are at risk, that you deal with every day in your school systems, and we try to give them an opportunity to start building for a workforce, for, to put them from high school to workforce. Here's why this program is the only program that I've endorsed for myself personally and the First Lady, but why this program to me is so important. 98% of the kids that go through this program, these at-risk students, go into the workforce, they are successful, they graduate from high school and they go into the workforce and not only that, this program that we are involved with, we follow that student for a year after they leave school to make sure they are still in the workforce. If we do not make an effort to take care of these kids, if we don't change the environment of our state and our country, these same kids that I'm talking to you about today will end up on the welfare system or will we end up on the social roles of the state of Missouri. And why is that important? Because it affects every one of you in this room. Because a while ago when I told you we fully funded the formula, because if we keep putting people on the welfare roles in this state, to give you an idea where that's at in the state of Missouri, one million people in the state of Missouri are drawing some sort of aid out of six million. So one in every six people if we continue to expand that program, that will affect our schools. But when we have the opportunity to be successful, and I'm going to help you with that, and the First Lady will help you that, with funding to be able to put that program in every school. Unfortunately, there's only 29 schools in the state of Missouri that have this program. And most of it's because most people just don't know about it. So I ask you today, you give the First Lady an opportunity to come and visit your school, to tell you about JAG, to tell you how we can help fund it. And you'll be surprised, and me as the governor, I will commit to this, 
There's over a million dollars in this budget that I signed this year that goes towards that JAG program. There will be more money that I will try to put in the budget for this program because these are the programs I believe trying to help kids. If not, they end up in worse places, they work on our programs, or they, work, they end up in penitentiary, and we don't need that. Our economy depends on the future of our public education system, and we want our children to do well in school and have the resources to achieve this. All across the state of Missouri, as I travel across the state of Missouri, the one item that I hear more and more and more, and it doesn't matter whether it's the Boot Hill, whether it's Kansas City or St. Louis, but the, they don't have the employees to go higher because that skilled, force, that skilled workforce is lacking in the state of Missouri. We have to figure out a solution to that. You men and women that are here today have got to help to figure out that solution. How do we prepare our students for the workforce. Other states are doing it. Other states are successful because they're thinking outside the box and they're trying to prepare kids in school, whether it's junior high or high school, trying to seriously prepare them for the workforce. Now sometimes that takes change and that's not always something we all want to hear. We get set in our ways sometimes and we don't want changes. But I want you to be at the table when those changes are made. But I want you to help the state of Missouri and I want you to help these people out here. Now, I know there's, a, I'll, I'll probably quote these stats wrong and I'm not for sure of the numbers, so I know the media's here, so I'm giving that disclaimer up front. I'm not for sure, but I'm gonna give you a shot at it. What I do know, 40% of the young men and women in this state start out in college to go get degrees. Less than 30% ever complete that degree. So 70% of the people in this state out here need jobs. They need skilled jobs. And nowadays when you're a welder, you're a mechanic, you're a roofer, whatever you want to be, graphic design, those jobs are out there. IT, agriculture business, you can just go on down the road you will have the ability to prepare those young men and women for the workforce. Again, that will be a priority of my administration to figure out solutions to the workforce of this state because everywhere you go, we are lacking that and we are behind compared to all the other states around us. We fall behind in that category. And we're doing things in the state of Missouri and we'll continue to do to make that better. The other thing I mentioned to you was infrastructure. I believe infrastructure is the key to the state of Missouri's future, to our economic growth, and to why people want to come and live in your school districts. will depend on the infrastructure we provide in the state of Missouri. There is no way to sugarcoat this. It's going to cost something to do it. It has. It's been over two decades since we've done anything with the transportation cost in the state of Missouri. Now, I don't want to pay any more taxes than anybody else. I really do not, believe me. But as a governor of the state of Missouri, sometimes you have to lead and you have to do what you feel like is right for the state of Missouri. What you'll have in front of you in November is a gas tax. It'll be two and a half cents for the next four years to a total of 10 cents. That, I believe, will shape the future for Missouri. And if we have the opportunity to vote on that in November, I ask all of you in this room to take a close look at that and to understand the importance of it for the state and to make a decision. But every one of you in this room in your own right are leaders. You will have an effect on people around you. But I think it's one of the most important things that we'll be facing in November for the state of Missouri if you want to move it forward. We're in the center of the United States of America. There is no reason that we cannot do better in this state. There's no reason we can't provide more businesses, more tourism, more people to come here and want to live. But if you don't have people qualified to go to work for companies that come here, if you don't have the infrastructure, if you don't have the airports, the rail, the ports, the highways, the bridges, many of you and even in this room go miles and miles out of your way because you can't go across some bridges in this state today to get kids to school. 
down in the boot hill of the area, there's a town, that there's a bridge that you go into a town. The bridge is closed down. You can't even get an ambulance through there. Different parts of the state are facing real challenges. That is important, and it's important for you as educators because it's going to decide where we go in the future of Missouri on that. As governor, it is my mission to keep the communication lines open with all of you. Now let me start off by saying I, I earned every one of these gray hairs I got in my head, so I just want you to know. We're not always going to agree on everything. So if it means we have to come back and have an arm wrestle or whatever you want to do, we'll do it. We're not going to agree on everything. But I guarantee you the majority of the time, if we can sit at a table and we figure out what's best for this state of Missouri and what's best for our kids, we'll be fine. We can work together. We can come up with solutions for that. I tell people a lot of times when I'm out on the trail and I'm speaking, at different events, how important it is for me and what my job is as governor and what my job is as a father and as a grandparent and what it is for me to lead the state of Missouri. But I want to finish with this. Every one of you that are here today has the privilege of living the American dream. Every one of us in this room and there's no exception to that. But the only way that you have got to live the American dream is what people before you have done, what your parents have done, what your grandparents have done, and truly what our forefathers have done with things called the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and the Constitution and that has been passed down to each and every one of us that's sat in this room today. And it's been passed down to us so we could have that privilege of living the American dream, to enjoy life to its fullest. Not to say there won't be ups and downs in all our lives, but the only reason we've had that opportunity is because what other people has done before me and you. But I tell you today, it is our time. It is mine and your time. If you really want to change the state of Missouri, if you want to change the lives and young men and young women to prepare them for the future like people done for me and you, that's what this is all about. This is what you do. This is what you do as administrators to make sure that happens so you can pass that down. And that's what my job is as the governor of the state of Missouri. God bless each and every one of you that are here today. God bless the great state of Missouri. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much for having me here today. Thank you.